thousand miles on it with no issues whatsoever. I mean, nothing. Actually, that's not true. It did have service alarm uh, reminder, reminder pop up in the little dash display thing. And uh, I figured out that was, um, there's this horrible little alarm system they have with an old nickel um, battery that's mounted under the front passenger bumper and the battery eventually just corrodes. And when it corrodes, it leaks down on the circuit board and shorts the whole thing out, it's a piece of junk. I just tore the whole alarm system out. Um, the light still goes on, but and the lights will flash if the alarm set off, but there's no siren. Um, I was gonna replace it, but they're really expensive and I, I don't want the siren anyway. Um, so I just left it, it's disconnected. Threw it in the trash and I just left the um, connector there. I took the alarm apart for those of you thinking why don't you take it apart, replace the battery and like I said the circuit board was completely trashed. It was all corroded from acid leaking from the battery. The battery is on top and when it leaks it just the the acid just literally goes right down the, onto the circuit board. Um, if they would have reversed it you would just have to replace the battery. Anyway so that brings me to why I'm out here. Um, Power. Okay has started exhibiting a symptom where it doesn't want to start. It'll just crank over, crank, crank, crank. Super strong, battery's great, the starter's great, solenoid, everything engages. It just turns over, turns over, turns over. And it finally catches maybe after 15 or 20 seconds of cranking. It doesn't do it all the time. It's, it's in intermittent, I can't figure out. It's not like certain temperature, not a certain angle of the car. Um, I try putting the, the key on to, you know, um, ignition, uh, I'm sorry, accessory, prime the pump, it just doesn't matter. And in looking online, people say it can be one of two things. The Well, three things actually. It could be the camshaft sensor, which is right here. It takes one minute to install. Um, I ordered this part here um, off of Rock Auto. Or, that's the least likely, but it was literally right here. I just replaced it. It's the original. Or it's the crankshaft sensor, which is buried down here. I still haven't gotten to yet down here. Or third, it's the fuel pump, um, where it can lose pressure sitting and the fuel kind of starts going back and the, and the pump needs time to prime. Most people have problems with that crankshaft sensor and this has never been replaced. Um, I, I bought the uh, Denso um, made in Japan um, from Rock Auto at the same time and I'm working on replacing that. So the reason I started the video is because of this piece of crap air box right here. Um, I couldn't figure out how to get this thing out. I, I thought I knew how and Volvo, of course, didn't make it simple. So the reason I want to get it out is because you really need to get your arm in here sideways and go under this coolant tube to get to that sensor. Um, I wanted to show someone how to remove this. This is a 2004 Volvo S60 2.5T uh, turbo. And I, I couldn't find a video online that was specific to this car for this airbox removal. I found a lot of Volvo airbox removals. Um, but not this one. So let me tell you, after you, I got one more thing here. After you take all the top part of it out, um, you take all this, all this junk out. There are three, there's one here, there's one up here, and there's one over here on the driver's, right by the driver's side wheel. There's these three like push pins and they're four pins. See if I can get a light in here if you can see that. Um, you literally, they all slide in. You can't just slide it out because these two slide to the left. This one slides to the right. And obviously that's not gonna work at the same time. You can't just pull them up. Um, this plastic piece is a solid piece here and extends down through a rubber grommet and it's got a big plastic lip on the other side, so you can't just pull these out. And it's a pain in the butt because there's four taps, and you have to try to squeeze them at the same time. The only way I was successful to get this thing out was starting to this front one closest to the headlight, and you gotta squeeze two tabs, hard as you can, 
and pull and just pull as much pressure up on that air box as you can and then start squeezing the other two and just keep pulling with all your might and this one popped off finally so you got some more wiggle room then i moved to this one closest to the steering wheel and again pushing just two tabs and being able to pull because it had the leverage here it popped this one off and then i could just yank this one off they're horrible i'm really tempted to replace them with a uh, big washer um, nut and bolt uh, it just goes through these three spots right here um, i i don't know i guess it's just cheap that's why they did it cheap and easy to just pop these on but it's it was horrible getting this thing out um, everything else is kind of super easy except for this so i just wanted to make that video uh, and show you how to get that air box out um, if you just try to just pull and pull and pull on this it's gonna something's gonna snap so again and you can't it was really hard to from the front here there was no room to get your fingers down in there so i had to come in from this side way down here with a long nose needle nose pliers so just want to let you guys know that um, everything else like i said has been straightforward this pops right off the camshaft pops right off with a 10 millimeter single single bolt right there comes out and uh let me show you what it looks like there you guys oops it's this little guy right here that's all it is um the other one the crankshaft sensor looks very similar but it's actually got a sorry it's got a silver end to it again just a single it's a two-prong connection on this guy it's a single nut but it's buried it's buried down there so i'll take some more video when i get some more stuff out of the way i can get to it that's all guys hope that helps someone with airbox because man I thought, why do they make this so hard? And then I remembered it's Volvo. freaking fiasco so I got the old part out which is down here um, the plastic tab broke though to the connector because this car is so old and the plastic so brittle and I pushed it down it literally just snapped the plastic actually I just had that happen I was just moving this wire looking at something before I started and it's so brittle this wire just like I don't know how well you can see it just disintegrated this um, not wire the um, plastic loom to cover it this car is what 2004 17 going on 18 years old um, I don't really think this is gonna come out but let's see if you can see right there it actually broke off the part that's connected to the wiring 
obviously I'm not going to change that out because that would be a gigantic nightmare. Um, wow, it's definitely brittle. So I'm going to put it back in there. You can see where it goes way down there. I had to cut the um, zip tie that zip ties to a little bracket right here just to get some more slack on this wiring loom. What a disaster. What a mess. I was trying to clean that out a little bit before I put it back. Not that it matters too much. I just, that's just me. I like things to be clean. But boy, is it tight quarters. This coolant hose does not move. And this main wiring harness does not move much at all. So we're going to put this back in. You can probably see in the um, time lapse video, it took me a long time just to get this single bolt out of this thing. It was not a fun job. Uh, it's cold out. All right. Come on. Go back home. Come on. There you go. Put it down on the post. It's connected. Um, the zip tie goes right along here, right around here. So I'm definitely going to zip tie that. And there's no way this connector is going to come loose. Well, I shouldn't say no way, but I don't really know of another way to zip tie it because I'm thinking I could go around the front but I can't even go like around under it. It won't seal good. So we're just gonna go with that. I'm gonna put, start putting it all back together now. So a bolt goes on first, then a zip tie it, and I'll get the rest. Hey guys, putting this back together, and um, oh geez, I forgot to do something. Ugh, nuts. Um, I found, if anyone knows, there's a clip. Let's see. I don't know if you guys can see it. So the light is a piece of junk. I'm gonna replace this today. There is a clip down there. I don't know if it shows up. It's like, Well, I can't see anything. Right there, at the end of my screwdriver tip, there is something not connected. I have no idea what that could be. No idea. Don't know where it runs to. I didn't even notice that when I was taking this apart and I wish I would have. No idea what that is, that gray clip right there. Huh, anyone knows? I wonder if there's one on this side.
Interesting. Really hard to see, but no idea if anyone knows what that is. Alright. I probably should have put the cold or the um oops air intake in first. It pops in down here. That was really dumb of you, Brian. But I didn't. Got this put back in in there, zip tied it. Um snuck the coolant back line in, put the main electrical loom back in and tighten this 10 millimeter bolt down. That's a 10 millimeter bolt bolt to get the crankshafts in throughout. But no idea what this extra extra connection's for. Have to look that up later. Let's continue. I'm gonna do the air intake next, which goes right in here. Um, right in there, it just pops in. Nothing really holds it in place. And it pops in the bottom of this thing too. Okay, let's find that piece. There it is. Ow. Can't kneel. All right, that was a pain. Hardest part is the air box. And then getting past the uh, coolant and main wiring room right there, just no wiggle room. Um, everything else went on good. I replaced two of my broken zip ties with new ones. Got no leftover bolts or nuts, which is always good. Batteries reconnected. Uh, let's try to start it up. Uh. Starts up. It's really good. You guys probably can't see anything. Got a regular service light on. 73,513 miles. Why is my air conditioning on? Why is my auto light on? Who's turning my auto light on? Alright, tape deck works too. Got this for 99 cents. Curiosity killed the cat. Keep your distance. 
never heard of them, but it was a, one of three tapes and it sounded like the best one. Alright. We'll run it. Let's see how quiet the engine is. Super quiet. Let's see. Only time will tell. I'll update you guys. Um, again, sorry it's been so long. I'm by no means an expert mechanic, um, but I try to fix things myself when I can and have fun. Um, the other thing that I need to really do to this car is, I don't know if you can see with the lights, but these, there's this rubber seal that goes all the way up and it's cracked right here. I don't know if the sun's too bright. It's just shot. I, I think it's, this is all one piece that stamps out. I don't know how to get this out. I don't even know what it's called to order a new one. Both sides are just completely sun and dry rotted. I'd really like to replace this. Um, I think it just snaps out. I'm sure what it looks like. So that's on my list. I just don't know where to get them. All right. And there's Theo. There's Theo. Hi, buddy. Did you watch me the whole time? Did you? Oh, you're such a good boy. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.